Hello. Thank you very much for your attendance. I'd like to thank uh, the Foundation for Environmental Health and uh, the Alborada Foundation and the different uh, sponsors. I am going to speak about the risks inherent in electro-contamination or electro-smog. This is a new type of, con of pollutant that we should consider. Nowadays it is uh, quite significant. If we, but if we speak to people and we tell them, uh, we say, at home I've got electrical contamination, they will just uh, stare at you, uh, wondering what you're talking about. Uh, but uh, nowadays, the human beings well, live in an area, in a space, which uh, 25, 25 years ago could be, could have some electrical contamination. There may be high voltage lines uh, near our homes. But then time went by, and around the year 2000, mobile telephones started appearing, and this really involved a sudden growth in electromagnetic contamination. In fact, in the year 2000, speaking about electrocontamination was absurd because there was nothing. Uh, the thing is that nowadays we have gone from uh, this kind of a situation to this other type of situation. So we are surrounded by wireless elements electrical installations, multiple electrical installations that are very complex with lots of wires and lots of cables. Practically all the devices have some type of uh, cable connection. So we are in, an electric, in a completely, in a totally electrical environment. And since we don't know what all of this means, then I wonder what we are talking about, electromagnetic contamination. but. Uh, and not everybody knows uh, about these phenomena, so I'm going to try and explain this in a simple way. I'm going to try and explain to you what we're talking about. So we are surrounded by electrical fields, magnetic fields, and electromagnetic radiation. Radiations or electromagnetic waves. There are sectors of the population that say that the word radiation shouldn't be used because it's too alarming. But it's really electromagnetic radiation. There's nothing uh, to that. Now, what we're really talking about is electricity. Electricity is a natural phenomenon which occurs in nature. Atoms have their electrical charge and we have our own electrical charge. And this is something natural, but we have taken it to a level whereby we have loaded everything or charged everything electrically. And this is a video we chose, um, this is the first time that, that an electron, the electron's movement was recorded. I don't know whether we're going to ha be able to get it to work on this computer, but I'm sure, no, uh, apparently we can't. It's not f uh, playing on this computer, it's just a video that shows the movement of an electron. So, we could say that electrical currents are really uh, displacement of, uh, of uh, charges through a different through a surface. It's really electrons that go from one place to another. Depending on the nature of this flow, we can speak of uh, continuous or uh, alternate uh, current. Continuous current uh, and uh, alternate current. Alternate current does this, but at, uh, but at a very high speed. Continuous current is a constant flow of electrons. It has no magnetic movement, there's no magnetic constant because there's no uh, conditions to generate electromagnetic radiations. Um, cars, for example, work with continuous current electronic devices, any devices that work on batteries, work with continuous currents. Continuous currents were the first currents to be used for lighting cities until 
our alternate current was discovered. It was much easier to, trans to transmit. The cables needed were thinner, and so it was considered to be better. Alternate current, as opposed to continuous current, well, in, in, in the alternate current, the uh, electrons change their polarity very fast. Now, continuous current is the uh, current you find in nature. Uh, it participates in all sorts of natural processes. We even have, uh, so the, the cell membrane, for example, has uh, uh, continuous current, but alternate uh, is a f uh, current is a forced system, really. Uh, then then uh, what are the important concepts? Well, the Ohm law, which says that uh, tension is equals voltage. Um, and the resistance is measured in ohms. Now, what is an electrical field? An electrical field could be described as um, the place in space where an electrical charge uh, can be felt. In this photograph, you can see metals, metal powder, and there's a leading uh, thread here. And, and some current passes through it, and then when you pass current, you can see the electrical field because the electrical charges exercise some, some force. So they have their own uh, space, and they exert a certain force. The magnitude that we use to measure this is uh, volts per meter. This is a vector field. Now, then we have also magnetic fields which in the same way as electrical fields these well in these areas of space we can feel the magnetic forces with the uh, ferret uh, with uh, with the iron uh, powder um, in order to measure this what we do is we take the flow density we measure the flow density in tesla and in its sub multiples when we speak in a, when we work in a home, uh, what we do is we measure in nano tesla, which is in an, which is a fraction of the tesla, and then we have electromagnetic radiation, which is a combination of both fields, an electrical field and a magnetic field. When we uh, induce a displacement of particles, when in, in order to move in a vacuum, so radiation can be transmitted through space, it doesn't need any special medium, then these two variables appear. There's an electrical movement in the vertical uh, axis. For example, if, the, if X was voltage here, we would have zero volts, 200 volts. If we go back to zero volts, it would go down to minus so many volts, and in this, uh, flow of particles at a certain moment when there's a change of polarity, that's precisely when uh, the magnetic field changes and that's how things move in uh, space and go from one place to another. Electromagnetic radiation is not just mobile telephones. Solar light is electromagnetic radiation too. Um, Hertz, who was a German physicist, created the first device to emit and uh, transmit signals. And his descendants uh, devoted themselves to uh, car rental. Now, the pe performance or the behavior of an electromagnetic radiation depends on the energy transported or transmitted. We call so frequency is the number of times that the wave changes its polarity. It is measured in hertz, and uh, for example, the electrical current of a home is of 50 hertz, in the United States of 60 hertz, and for example, mobile GSM telephones have the same variation in seconds, but 900 million times, so it's 900 megahertz. 
this is the electromagnetic spectrum. And to have an idea of the size of a wavelength, for example, the radio, the well, the size is that of a building between, well, microwaves, well, would be between a human being and a butterfly. The, the wavelength of a GCM, a GSM is about 30 centimeters, so it's got more or less this size. And then if we take, as we go up in the spectra, we go up to more energy, more greater wavelength, and then we go to gamma re radiation and the size is at the level of an atomic nucleus. This is another way of conceiving the spectrum. Right, so all of this that is surrounding us, we should see how much and how it produces something to health or, or how it affects our health. Um, in principle, we are speaking about currents that are in the air, which circulate in the air, which surround us, and, uh, and we, of course, have some currents too. We are bioelectromagnetic. We have uh, potential differences. Our heart has a certain electric charge, and we surround ourselves with quite a bit of um, electrical currents. Now, any urban area, and like what happened uh, 10 years ago, may have electrical charges anywhere. And 20 years ago, this could not be perceived. And this is because levels of radiation are so high that the body is really capacitating. Uh, all the rules drawn up have been drawn up through induced currents, but there's two ways of charging current. One is induction, and the other one is capacitation. It's two different ways of charging electrical energy in our body. It is also true that the experiments conducted are normally conducted for one specific thing. So if you study the actions of magnetic fields on cells, you only study it for that. But not, nobody has studied and something that is impossible to study because of the amount of variables we are subjected to is the mixture of all the combined radiation of all the different types of radiations, frequencies and uh, pulsed or modulated waves that we receive in an urban environment. But, but, but what is true is that nowadays with, a, with, a, with a more or less uh, efficient device uh, you could detect a lot of things that induce us and that charge us and how our body, uh, well, there may be going from one pavement to uh, where there is no high voltage line to another pavement where there is high uh, voltage lines, uh, well, you know, you have, may have a difference of, I don't know, 15 volts, for example. So to show you how we are surrounded with uh, radiation, this is a world scale graph that provides us with the rate per 100 inhabitants of mobile telephones in 2001. The rate was more or less of 20 units per 100 inhabitants. And in 2011, the rate is practically 100 per 100 inhabitants. This is as regards mobile telephones. In Spain, the number of units, uh, the number of contracts was of 21,000 in 2000, 21 million in 2000 to 51 million in 2010. So there's many more mobiles than inhabitants. And in addition to mobile telephones, we have the whole generation of intelligent meters, electrical meters and gas and water meters, and this through GSM or Wi-Fi emits signals with readings every now and then and this multiplied by the number of houses gives you an enormous amount of units that irradiate electrical energy to the space. There's so much electrical energy that some people are uh, uh, trying to design a self-chargeable cell phone. 
So it, it, just it, it will just the battery will just be charged with the current that is uh, floating in the air, and this is the electrical consumption since 1999. Well, it has also grown. Not so much as telephony, but uh, it is true that we're now around six million kilowatts, which is enormous. So our consumption, our habits have also varied. When I was a kid at home, there was a single television set, and now at home, I think there are four. So uh, there's no comparison. We can't compare with the situation 25 years ago. Everything has changed dramatically. So, I may say, but is this really a risk? Because people say, but what are you talking about? The fact that I wear my telephone in the pocket or the fact that my child speaks on a mobile phone, is it really risky? Well, we'll see whether scientists can clarify something. I read, a st about, I read a study by Mr. Alan Frey of 1962. He worked at, at this university and then he worked for General Electric. He was a neurologist and he was asked to study certain things. And two of the things that discovered, one in 1962, was the effect, the thermoelastic effect, which is for a person to detect electromagnetic radiation for some reason this is called a thermoelastic effect but it can be this can be detected or and identified uh, so there's a wide range depending on the pulse and the energy emitted then uh, people can detect this so we can uh, realize and you can perceive electromagnetic radiation then in 1975 this gentleman managed to go through the uh, blood-brain barrier with a frequency of 1.2 megahertz. He opened the barrier and got a liquid to, uh, that he injected into an artery to pass to the brain. This has never been done again, but it, the people who did this later uh, did this badly on purpose so that mice would die before anything could be seen. If you Google uh, th uh, this, you will start seeing many, many studies uh, that were conducted in, uh, and you will see how the uh, number of uh, pyramidal cells in the hippocampus uh, starts uh, decreasing and this affects qualitative and quantitative uh, characteristics of the pyra uh, pyramid-shaped sh cells of the hi hippocampus. Uh, uh, prenatal or pre-birth exposure to mobile telephones, pre-birth uh, ex radiation, etc. And this has nothing to do with the reflex uh, report, which is a report that has been posted on, on the internet and the European Union has recognized them as valid. Okay, more than even more and this is just a random search in, in Google and then you've got to read all of these reports because some of them are really scary. So what effects can we uh, speak about? Well multiple sensitivity uh, is a disease that has to do with central sensitization as in the same way as fibromyalgia and the chronic fatigue syndrome. Many people suffer from them in an aggregate way or in an overlapping way. For me, this is more of a chain. Sometimes you start with SQM and then you have sens electrosensitivity. You start with fatigue and then you end up with uh, SQM. So I've seen all the different parts. One of the fundamental problems that uh, these people find is the lack of diagnostic criteria, the lack of credibility they have when going to the doctor and being referred to the psychiatrist. Now that kind of problem, even in their own family environment, the lack of credibility. And this, uh, I would like to make a plea to doctors to disseminate that these things happen and that they should devote five minutes a day to looking f up information because as many doctors, especially in primary care, who have never heard talk about any of this. Um, between one and five percent of the population uh, have these problems and between 12 and 15 percent of the population present with some symptom. 
the symptoms that people manifest are headache, insomnia, chronic uh, fatigue, think, uh, skin irritations, loss of memory, depression, arrhythmia, disorientation, thyroid disorders, tinnitus, which is uh, the famous Alan Frey experiment, which is included in some uh, WHO rep uh, reports. And this, uh, these are, uh, I have had patients who detected those um, sounds uh, until their house was shielded and then they stopped hearing it. But their uh, ENL sir, uh, doctor gave them treatment that had nothing to do with what they really had because the doctor had never heard about any of this. These symptoms are very common and they're practically present in uh, any of these uh, environmental diseases. But we are protected because there is a law. There is a law and this protects us. But we, this is not really the case because the law is based upon the criteria of the international non-ionizing radiations published in 1998 and this was the law that the WHO used. In 1998 with previous, with studies prior to that year. Uh, that is, and then that is when the European uh, Union made its recommendation. So we have seen that legal regulation was performed on a world scale in just four years. I've never seen so many countries agree on something as quickly as all that. In four years everything was done. From the time that the W from the moment the WHO issued its norm to the moment Spain uh, transposed the European directive. It is very suspe suspicious, right? So just before the boom of mobile telephony this norm uh, was issued, which protects us all, but it may not really protect it. This norm, we can see the graph here, which shows the growth in number of mobile telephones, and you can see how regulations were issued. That norm only guarantees that there are no thermal effects, and but it doesn't study biological effects, but it is very interesting because in the same norm, WHO recognizes, I can't seem to get the pointer to work, this, these recommendations are based upon immediate effects, effects on health from short-term exposures such as peripheral nerve stimulations, etc. In the case of potential long-term effects from exposures such as an increase in cancer risk, the information available is insufficient, but the funny thing is that all of the current legislation is for short-term exposure, not for 24-hour-long uh, exposures, 365 a day, only uh, ex acute exposure. So the, refer the legal reference levels that say that we are protected refer to six-minute-long exposures, but not round-the-clock exposure. And it also should be said that this regulation was drafted with uh, the standard of a six foot tall human being, where, but women, pregnant women were excluded, children were excluded, elderly people were exclu excluded, people in wheelchairs were excluded. Last year, there was news that uh, uh, radiation from mobile telephones could be carcinogenic. It's a well-known classification from IARC, but of course the International Commission of uh, uh, Ionizing uh, Emissions didn't participate to it. It was the A IARC which states uh, what has been described in that press release. And, uh, well, uh, well, I mean, the infant leukemia had been defended by a scientist and then he'd been uh, really uh, released from that particular survey and uh, in the research. And afterwards, they have achieved what the other 
IRC members wanted because they had really enough scientific evidence to suspect that the incidence of uh, salivary glands cancer was due to the use of mobile phones. So the WHO had to, uh, be, to carry out that type of classification. And uh, the experts uh, really were just considered as being outsiders to it. So they were no longer able to intervene in it, unfortunately. Now the European Parliament has organized a campaign, kind of lobby, and last year, for instance, there was a resolution taken by the Council of Europe which was uh, not a binding decision, but anyway, it's being listened by the European Parliament. Uh, they made a statement to the Parliamentary Assembly concerning the electromagnetic uh, uh, fields. And they were asking for a recognition uh, uh, for uh, special attention given to persons being electrosensitive, and so that also schools will consider cable installation uh, instead of wireless installations, etc. And as to the regulations and the legal limits which have been set up, are uh, the ones which appear on red. And uh, that slide, you can see uh, 900 uh, down to 450, etc., and Wi-Fi values. And the values which are being required, and uh, based on the findings of different scientific uh, meetings. So we are much above what is right now the legal requirement. So if and that type of frequency, if you were in front of it, I'm sure that it will be a very, very strong reaction. Now, as a conclusion, we must say that at present we have enough scientific evidence at least to revise the pre-established limits which we have right now. And what about the risk factors at home? We have some risk factors, such as the electrical insulation, uh, the fact of uh, having more and more electronic devices and uh, more and more dirty electricity, as we call it, and it has to do with a lot of pathologies. Uh, we, uh, within the kitchen, I mean, uh, next to a bedroom, it is a risk factor as well. We have seen it in some experiments the uh, abuse as to the use of mobile telephone and the high and medium uh, really voltage which should be located right at the middle of the street. Now, just an example concerning the risk factors. This is a kind of uh, uh, exposition as to the uh, electrical field. The value which we recommend in that case uh, based on the German Bioarchitecture uh, Institute would be much less than that. We have 170 in that case. A computer, 306 volts. So, and these people will acknowledge that they are very tired all day long, practically, as to the dirty electricity. Uh, well, we've been asked last year about that particular problem in Spain. Well, we have now the uh, solution being proposed and how can we uh, achieve a better and more healthy environment where well, we carry out a geobiological study in our, our, our measurements of electrical fields. We measure the low frequency magnetic fields, the level of uh, harmonics, the measurement of uh, high frequency radiation, many, uh, 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 magnetostatic analysis, electrostatic analysis, and measure a uh, wooden floor it's, uh, you get more fatigue compared with the ceramics. So you have the, these, uh, it's curious really, but is uh, really something which has been registered. Now, with that type of uh, survey, which we do in fact, is to try to recommend uh, protection elements which exist in the market, which can be achieved uh, trying not to have all these radiations and electrical fields at home. 
so that you can be better protected and have a better and more rational use of technologies. Thank you very much indeed for your attention.